Welcome to Believing the Bizarre, where we dive into the unknown and the unusual, and tell you whether or not we find it believable. That's right. Thank you for joining us on this listener episode. Bonus! These are always so spooky, aren't they? They're the spookiest, because there's no... You're hearing it right from the source, and it's it's it always feels more believable to me. Spoiler alert, I guess. <laughs> not I, don't, to, I don't know this story. It might be bullshit. I don't know. Not to set the bar too high, but the this one, I think, is pretty spooky. All right. I am ready. And honestly, I don't see a point of being around the bush. So on that, let's dive into The Children of the Cow. So Priya is from Maryland, and that's not really relevant to the story, except there's a factor later of an old house, and like that, that's the only thing. There's a factory of an old house? A f- the factor of an old house. The is factor. Like, okay. Gotcha. Like the, okay. So she has three incidents that happened to her. They kind of flipped her from a skeptic to, well, still a skeptic, but less of a skeptic. Okay. Big, big uh, gap there that we're covering. <laughs> well- she still has a hard time accepting the paranormal unless she's personally experienced it or observed it. That That's fair. Personal experiences go a long way. That's true. Her parents were are doctors, so growing up, she was really taught to believe in science. Yes. Very logical. But in high school, during her sophomore year, she had an experience with two friends, Kelly and Mick. And they've become less close as the years have gone by, but their experiences did shake Priya up, and they had a lasting impact on her. So, the events of these stories take place in 2016. Crazy year. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, like I said, Kelly and Mick are her two friends. They both happened to share something. And at this point, so these are out of order chronologically, but at this point, Priya experienced something paranormal with both of these friends individually. This was also a point where she was becoming engrossed in the paranormal as well. So, it's like these worlds are like colliding. So, the thing that Kelly and Mick shared was that they both had prolific dreams. Not Priya, just Kelly and Mick. Gotcha. And these things were never, like, big things. They just, like, would dream about them and they'd actually come true. Like, one example is that Kelly told Priya that she saw Priya in a hospital room. uh, And this wasn't a threat. It was just she saw her in a dream in a hospital room. And Mick independently told Priya that he dreamed that they were all in a hallway. And Priya ended up limping away. And she didn't answer them as she called her name. Is this like Priya has two friends, or are they all three friends? They're all three friends. Gotcha. So they're friends. Yeah. It's like, uh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. (laughs) What if, like, what if Mick and Kelly are like, all right, I'm going to tell her this tomorrow. What are you going to tell her? Yeah, I'll tell her this tomorrow, too. Okay. I would... Somebody's got to take a baseball bat to her knee, but (laughs) this is coming true, damn it. It's a lot of examples. Like, if that was the case, they did that a lot. Yeah. But Priya was like, okay, whatever. I, I don't really believe that. So she moved on. She wasn't super worried because she's not particularly clumsy. So she was like, I'm sure I'll be fine. However, the next morning she was running late for school and she twisted her ankle after falling down the stairs and it sent her to the ER instead of homeroom. Mick and Kelly had their own specialties. Mick dreamt about events and Kelly would dream about people. Mick dreamed about Kelly crying on a bench and sure enough, a week later, Kelly was crying on the exact bench in the dream after her grandmother had gotten into a car accident. So a couple more examples are Kelly dreaming and forgetting something important, and then a few days later, she forgot this huge essay. Mick dreamed about meeting a new person the next day, and then the next day there was a transfer student. Do you know how stressful that would be to constantly be dissecting your dreams because they keep coming true? Like, it's one thing to have a crazy dream and you think about it, you're like, wow, that was bizarre. But, like, if you you really truly believed that your dreams were, like, prophets, every time you wake up, and, like, what about the ones that are just dreams? Like, what if you just had a dream that your mom died in a car accident? You would be so stressed. You'd be so worried for so long. Yeah, and then what if it never happens? It was just, that one was just a dream. Like, that makes me very thankful that my dumbass dreams never come true. Or, like, your fingers are corn dogs and you eat them? Yep. Yeah. That's why I don't have dreams. No goals. <laughs> I just float right. through life. No dreams over here. So their dreams were always vague, but they happen a significant amount of time. They were always focused on the two of them because that makes sense of their, their dreams. Priya, well, they were kind of focused on Priya, weren't they? Just the one. 
but they were involved in her life, so I think that's why she was taken into that one. Who? So who was the one that was crying on the bench? Kelly. And Kelly had that dream about herself? Mick had the dream about Kelly. Gotcha. Okay. I think because they're engrossing each other's lives. Yeah. It makes in sense. the subconscious. So the only dream that they both had that involved Priya at this point is her getting hurt. Yeah. Okay. So Priya came to the conclusion that they were psychic, or at the very least, supernaturally sensitive. She just didn't tell her parents. <laughs> like, hey, uh, Priya, why are you guys all sitting in a sand circle? Uh, science, mom. <laughs> yeah, right. So Priya went to research. And apparently, there are many theories about why people are psychic. So if this was a movie, this would be the montage research. I'm in a in a library. It's those things where you have the newspapers in front of you and they flip really fast. Absolutely. This is that scene. Actually, that scene came to mind. I was like, oh, of course it scene. did. Yeah. Of course it did. So some people are born psychic because of the time they're born. Oh, these are the theories. Like the time they're born or another one says... There's a special area in the brain, but one really caught her eye. People born with a cowl or a placenta over their face are said to have supernatural powers, and these are dangerous and rare. So what are the odds that both Kelly and Mick could have been born that way? So Priya brought up her research to her friends, and she found out that they both saw supernatural things. They both had a history of supernatural centuries on their maternal sides. And they're both born with cows on their face. On the mother's side. That's, I wonder if that's something to do with the X chromosome. I wonder. Dad's just come in and water shit down with that Y chromosome. It's like the X's are like seeing supernatural shit. And then the dads come in. Like, I'm going to pour a little, a little Y chromosome in there. That makes sense. Doesn't D- it? Dumb this shit down. So when she found out they had so much in common and shared similar powers, she got a chill down her spine. And Priya said they dealt with the same things. That she did not. Like seeing unearthly spirits. She considers herself lucky to not have to deal with that kind of situation. Agreed. 100% (laughs) thankful. Hashtag thankful. And she still respects them for having to deal with that and coping, but she doesn't think she could. Honestly, I don't... All right. I've asked you this question before, I think, in a different way. So I'm going to ask you again, because maybe your answer will change. Let's say uh, I'm Priya, and you want to be Mick or Kelly? Kelly. All right. You're Kelly. If you had a dream that I died, would you tell me? No. I appreciate that. Peace of mind goes a long way. So this incident is chronologically first, and it happened with Kelly. So being a good friend and a good person, Priya noticed that Kelly had not been sleeping well. She had dark circles under her eyes, and she kept falling asleep in class. When Priya first asked Kelly about it, she refused to say anything. However, After Priya and Mick relentlessly asked, their friend Kelly finally told them about the nighttime terror. She was consistently waking up to seeing a shadow person at the end of her bed, and it was just menacing. So Priya was not a believer at all at this time. She flat out did not believe anything. Mick, on the other hand, started asking the things that I would ask. He goes, what time does it happen? What does it do? Does it do anything to you? Mick was raised Catholic. So was I. You should have picked Mick then when we did that scenario. Just saying. (laughs) Okay. He tried to reassure Kelly by telling her he can get a priest to bless the house. And Priya, being practical, asked if it was like her parents coming to check on her during the night. Sometimes my parents just come inside and stay on the end of my bed and they just look at me. (laughs) And they're wearing a black cloak. And it's like hate in their heart. You know how moms are. (laughs) (laughs) Kelly was convinced that it was not her parents. She regularly had a nightlight on. And she told them if it was one of them, she would have seen their faces. But this was just shadow. It was a silhouette that stood there and did nothing but stare at her. Priya, coming from a scientific background, suggested that maybe it was just like sleep paralysis or lucid dreaming. But Kelly said no. It was no trick of the mind. Kelly drew out a picture of the thing that terrorized her. It was like a horror movie. All black, no eyes, and no identifying features. As Priya and Mick looked at the drawing, Mick looked unhappy. Mick, at the time, unbeknownst to Priya, he was dealing with his own kind of paranormal phenomenon. When Kelly's parents left for the weekend, the situation got worse. Kelly asked Priya to stay the night because she was scared of being home by herself. Priya got the idea from watching Ghost Adventures to go full Ghostbusters mode. Being in Drama Club... So they just started working out. (laughs) A lot. Being in Drama Club... No, they bought an abandoned firehouse. There you go. (laughs) Being in Drama Club, 
Priya was close to the AV team, so they let her borrow some equipment for the sleepover. Priya got a recorder, a mic, a camera, and Priya set up Kelly's room like it was like on the set of Ghost Adventures. They actually duct taped the door and they triple checked the windows to make sure no one could come in the room. They stayed up for a while watching movies, but Priya fell asleep around 2 a.m. A little less than an hour later, at 3 a.m., Kelly was calling Priya's name, and Priya was just like, oh my god, go back to sleep. That's an odd reaction based on the circumstances. Like, it's not like she asked her to come over and woke up, and she was like, no, go back to bed. It's like, all right, let's try and catch something. Let's ghostbuster this house. And then at 3 a.m., she's like, nah, go back to bed. It's nothing. Like, it kind of goes against everything they already set up. And then Kelly says her name louder. So Priya remembering what's going on gets up oh, okay so she was in that sleepy days yeah so priya realizing what's going on she throws off her covers and she puts on her glasses and she saw that kelly was in her bed so she followed kelly's gaze and at the foot of her bed she looked horrified but there was nothing there she couldn't see anything but the look on kelly's face freaked her out so much like she started to freak out too so priya's logical side went out the window and she's like do you see anything and she's like i, I don't but i'm still scared kelly asked priya if she sees anything yeah so, unsure what to do. A few minutes later, she laid back down in her bed, and she put the covers over her head. And she told Kelly to do the same thing. So, they hid under the covers, and about a half an hour went by, and she goes, Kelly, do you still see anything? And she goes, yeah, it's still staring at me. So, both the girls got up around 7 a.m. They didn't sleep. They stayed under the covers until 7 a.m. Understandable. So they go out, they check the windows, they check the door, nothing had gone inside. So nothing physically came into the room. So they went to the kitchen, and like, you know, like, it's like the third or fourth scene after the monster attacks in the horror movie, and you're just like drained, and you're sitting there just like, <sighs> you know what I'm talking about? But kind of like the calm, you, well, uh, like, when you know the anxiety of the, the spooky scenes happen, and it's daytime, you can just kind of relax and be like, oh man, okay, I can catch my breath before the next scary scene. But you're still drained. Yeah, okay. I normally am, like, covering my ears and, like, shit like that. Yeah, so it's that. Okay. And they're sitting there, and Priya doesn't know what to do, so she gave Kelly a hug, and they just kind of, like, cried it out for a minute. So while they're packing up their ghost hunting gear, Priya says, why don't you come stay at my house for the rest of the weekend? Priya told Kelly to stay at Priya's house. Yeah. Did they put up any recording devices in the bedroom? Yeah. That's the only place it was. Oh. And they haven't checked it yet? They haven't checked it yet. Okay. So... Kelly actually got to sleep that weekend, which was nice because it's kind of like a relief. So as Priya was going through the videos of the sleepover, there were a lot of shadows, but nothing like stood out until about 3 a.m. when she noticed a different shadow. It was more opaque and it had a loose outline. The audio was nothing special. It was just their voices. But the only thing that stood out was the shadow that stood there basically until 7. Wow. Did she... I wonder if she has this. She didn't send it to us, right? No. I can email her if you want. That would be dope. <laughs> okay. Priya still doesn't know what it was, but it stopped. She stopped hearing about it after Kelly moved into Priya's house senior year. Like, moved in. Yeah. Like, that's where she lived that year. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's I didn't. good friends right there. Yeah. I wonder. I Part of me wonders if there's, like, some house stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. That ghost probably goes there now, and he's like, when is she coming back? <laughs> I'm not, I don't come here just to stare at the sheets. What the hell? I wonder, if there, I wonder if there's just like a lot of negative energy or something. It's hard for us to say. Yeah, it's true. I don't it, know. It definitely seems more like a look. I mean, if it's not an attachment if it didn't go to Priya's house. That's true. So it definitely seems like something there. Talking like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this last incident is the reason why Priya did not go to Mick's house for a year. Okay. So Mick's family lived in an older house, like I said before, and it was at least 100 years old. And it was once part of a huge farm that got parceled out over the years. Priya and Mick were in Mick's room studying on the first floor that evening. Mick's mom was sleeping in her room on the ground floor, taking a nap before a knife shift. Now Mick's sister had a room on the, on the, in the attic. It was like a refurbished attic. Like we're in right now. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Probably great sound quality. While Priya and Mick were studying about moles and covalent bonds, they heard footsteps above them. Moles like chemistry? Yes. Okay. It was, I was I was making an allusion to chemistry. I, I got you. Thank you. <laughs> so Priya ignored it because she assumed it was Mick's sister. She was frequently having boy troubles, and she released that frustration by stomping and screaming. 
Wait, what happened? Mick's sister lived above them. Yes, in the attic. They heard footsteps above them. Okay. And Priya assumed it was Mick's sister because okay. Mick's sister would have boy problems. So she would stamp around because she was angry at boys. I assume it's some kind of like press release valve for her. Oh, okay. I didn't. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what I assumed. So Priya jokingly said to Mick, when is your sister going to break up with her boyfriend and give me some peace? And Mick paused for like a beat and he looked at the ceiling and he said, my sister isn't here. Ooh. Ooh. Priya went to the most logical conclusion. A burglar was in the attic. <laughs> Standing, she grabbed her phone and ready to dial 911. Mick, being on the baseball team, grabbed his bat and took point. He told Priya to stay down and go to his mom's room, but she ignored him, not wanting to leave his side, and she followed behind. The attic door was slightly ajar, and it smelled so bad like rotting meat, Priya gagged. Slowly going up the stairs with the baseball bat, ready to take a head off, Mick suddenly stopped. When his foot hit the first rung of the ladder, the footsteps also stopped. He was considering going up, and Priya whispered that he shouldn't go. An overwhelming foreboding swept both of them. Priya grabbed Mick's shirt, and she tried to pull him back. She couldn't budge him, and he was frozen. Mick was focused so hard on something that Priya could not see from her angle. Mick was calm when he said again, Priya, go downstairs. Don't make a sound. Paranormal or not, this was one of the scariest moments of Priya's life. She had trouble dialing 911 because of her trembling fingers. Finally downstairs in the living room, she completed her call, and the police were en route. The ghost in the attic? All right, we'll be right there. I know, right? It's Maryland. I don't know. While on the phone, Mick came into the room and sank under the couch. He was pale, and his eyes were blank. He was still obviously very scared about what he had seen. Not a word was said until the police arrived. Mick's mom woke up when the police came in. She wasn't too happy. She gave Priya water while draping her in a blanket. The police swept the house, and they said there was nothing to indicate anyone was in the attic. Priya, like Mick, had not been sure of what they had felt, heard, and seen. They definitely heard the footsteps. After the police left, Mick took Priya home. His mom came with them. Priya thought they she wouldn't want to stay there either. Out of the house and on the way home, Priya asked Mick what he had seen. The little color that Mick had regained had left his face. His mom nodded at him. Mick said there was something. He called it a thing at the top of the ladder. He could only see the legs of whatever it was. Mick described it as having two dark legs, dark nails that were pointed. He said that it took a step toward him. He said he told Priya to leave because it felt like it wanted to hurt Priya, and Mick had been the only thing between Priya and the creature. He said he was praying the St. Michael's Prayer, but after he finished, it lingered while staring, but it eventually vanished. The car ride was terrible after that. Priya was freaking out. She didn't want to go back to Mix for the rest of the year. Her parents actually made her go through a Hindu ritual to get rid of bad energy and keep her safe from evil spirits. They made Priya do that? Yeah. After the thing with Kelly, her mind was already open to the paranormal. But this was a lot. If Mick had not been there, who knows what could have happened. Yay. That's Priya stories. Priya stories. Well, you want to talk about it? Let's discuss. So, those were the stories that Priya sent us. And thank you for sending the stories. We, yeah, we always so appreciate getting stories, doing the stories. Listener submissions are some of our favorites. It felt like a lot of me talking just now, but it was. I mean, it, it, those were intense stories. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the second one, third one? So, wait, hold on. You said three. So, yeah. it was the what they saw at the top of the ladder, and then it was what they saw at the end of the bed. Was the first... The first was... Um, the her dreams? Con- it was, yeah, it was the dreams. Coming to the conclusion that those they, her friends were psychic. I got you. So I would guess, I think because the house is so old for Mick, that there was either like a portal or something there before. I, I It seemed like me in the story that the mom was aware. Well, like, she was there when Mick... Like you said, she nodded at him yeah. to say what he saw. So I feel like this has been like a family thing that's been going on. Yeah. Probably why her his sister was always maybe in a bad mood or upset. Probably not just boyfriends. Yeah, I think there might be some kind of paranormal element to that. I think it's a family, like, loose secret. That- well, also, you said that they both had sensitivity coming from their mother's side. So that would naturally mean that Mick's mom 
experience stuff. Yeah, I think I think the whole family had been experiencing things in that house. I, I wonder, I, I don't know. So, like, yeah, I think Mick's story is frightening. I think Kelly's story is also frightening, too, though. Just that kind of oppression after, God, it seemed like weeks, at least, before yeah. Apriya spent the night there. And I wonder if that's, it kind of feels like an energy thing for her. Like, Mix seemed like a spirit. Kelly's thing kind of felt like an energy combining to make something malevolent. Malevolent. You think Kelly's was malevolent? Yeah, I do. Yeah, it seemed that way because they were so scared. I don't think a ghost that wasn't malevolent would put that kind of energy out. Yeah, that's true. I, but I wonder if it was she, they were afraid of what they felt or if it was more so just the fact that something creepy was happening at the end of the bed. I'm not saying that it wasn't malevolent. I'm just saying that that one might not have been. It definitely seems like Mick's story has a, a creature or an entity that does not mean well. I agree. You know, you might be right about Kelly. I'm not sure. For me, it seemed like it was kind of malevolent, but maybe that's just how I'm reading it. Maybe yeah. it's just inexperience and fear creeping and, into that. And in her, in her defense, I guess you could say, she is sensitive and she experiences things. So it's not like this was the only thing that happened. So for her to be this terrified of it, maybe that means that it wasn't, you know, a good thing. That's true. I don't know how we could know besides talking to the, the friends. Yeah. We'll hit them up, find them on Facebook. Yeah, right. Shoot them a message. I mean, so I guess, where do you land? I, I, I'll give the whole, I'll, I'll land in the middle of where I'm feeling. I give the experience at Mix a believable. The dreams, for some reason, I'm, I feel personally a little skeptical on. I feel like I would just need to know more about it 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 feels dreams are tough because it's you can kind of not that they're coincidental but you know what i mean like you can read dreams a certain way I, and and maybe my opinion will change if we get a photo of what they saw at the end of the bed i feel i'm leaning viable but it's oh, it, so is it's tough because there's three different things yeah yeah that's true i just combined you i mean I think some parts of it are believable. I think some parts are skeptical. So I'll just land in the middle and I'll say overall, I'll, I'll give it a viable, even though I do think there are parts of it I find believable. I specific, specifically mix story. And well, I don't know. Cause I do believe that they did see, that Kelly saw something in the end of her bed. So that would be too believable as in an, a skeptical. <laughs> There's no mathematical ratio. <sighs> no, you know what? That's two, two to one. I'll say, I'll say believable asterisk on the the dreaming okay believable without the dreaming i think that's really fair to me i come down as a viable which i'm glad you didn't i think it's viable because it's secondhand it's it's kelly it's sorry. that's true it's priya's firsthand experience experiencing people experience <laughs> that's true uh, supernatural that's a good activity. point and i don't think that she's lying or making things up that's how i think i think that she didn't actually have she observed people having the experience so that's the only reason I come down to viable. Okay. I think that's totally fair and that and it's a valid point. Thank you for listening to this uh, episode, this listener submission episode. Priya, thank you so much for sending this in. We appreciate that from the bottom of our hearts. These are some of our more interesting stories. And honestly, I'm so glad we started doing this. It's, it's a lot of fun because it, it gives you guys a chance to get your stories out there and this isn't like a conspiracy theory or an incredibly popular phenomenon happening. It's somebody's personal story that we get to tell. Always creepier, always more fun. So that being said, if you want your story or paranormal experience on the podcast, head to our website, www.believingthebizarre.com and go to submit your experience. There's a simple little form there. Fill that out. Please give as much detail as possible. Otherwise, we'll hit you up for the details anyway. And your story could be on the podcast. Yeah, Priya did amazing with the details on this. So I did not hit her up. She will be notified. <laughs> yes. So thank you so much for listening. As always, I'm Tyler. And I'm Charlie. And catch us next week on Believing the Bizarre. Podcast as bizarre as you are. <laughs> <laughs>